Okay, I'll look in the camera. Okay. Um, I don't see any direct influences from my childhood that would lead into what I'm doing today. But on the other hand, I uh, obviously everything I've done in my past has an influence on what I do today. But it's not any specific moment where I decided I wanted to be a graphic designer at all. Well, I think in, in uh, graphic design there's a trend of uh, faster and cheaper, um, in print production especially, but on the other hand, wherever you see that trend to faster and cheaper, there's a, a counterpart to that, and that's the, the trend of people who appreciate gr good graphic design and people who appreciate good printing. But that is possible with any technique. I work with letterpress technique, with the old technique, but it's also possible with offset and uh, digital design, of course. So uh, for me, the dis digital process is just interesting because I can do the whole thing. I don't get frustrated that I do a digital design, sit in front of the computer for eight hours a day, and then at the end all I do is send, out, send off a PDF. That's not what I do. I uh, design a poster, maybe there's digital uh, designing involved, maybe a lot of the, the process might be analog as well. But then I go ahead and produce the whole thing. So I choose a paper, I mix the inks by hand, I make the printing form, that might be hand composition, that might be lino cutting, whatever technique I decide to, to use. And then uh, at the end I print it and deliver it to the client. And for me this whole process is much, much more rewarding than just sending off a PDF. So I see my work, I'm a graphic designer, I design posters for clients. So if I design a poster, I have a certain purpose that I need to fulfill. So I have a client, he's asking for a, a poster for a punk concert. Or I have another client who's asking for a poster for a cheese manufacturing. So the color palette I use needs to reflect that topic. So the punk concert might have different colors than the cheese company, obviously. So it's a decision of what fits the purpose best. And that's a concept, the question of concept. What concept do I have in mind that I want to reflect in my color palette? Well, I decided together with the client, but I make a concept for the client. That means the client doesn't come to me and tells me, I want the blue poster for cheese. 
so that doesn't work so well. So I say, well, you want a poster for uh, your cheese. So it's a stupid example. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so I, uh, I, I say, well, we need this and that palette. We need this and this uh, form language. So that's the decisions. Obviously, it's not the first thing you might think of. So the concept might be, especially my cheese poster is not yellow, <laughs> it's black and it's colorful. But I'm not reflecting the cheese itself, I'm reflecting the smell and taste explosion. The emotion. Exactly the emotion. That is a different color than the cheese itself. Yeah, there's, there's many very important rules in typography and uh, in my work it's very important that I know all these rules. I, I know the exact correct spacing, I know what visually works. Uh, if you place a letter here or there, it's a different meaning. Up might be positive, down might be negative, left might be the begin, right might be the end. And that's the reading direction that we have. And that's just one rule in typography that's very important. So even if my layouts might appear very free and loose, there's certain uh, thoughts behind that and, and certain rules for sure. But as in any other discipline, uh, rules are there to be broken and to, to be uh, interpreted in a, in a fresh way. Yes, and this makes it very hard to think we are able to do uh, typography in another non-Latin typeface if we are not trained to do so, culturally and uh, typographically. For the longest time I thought uh, my influences are not Swiss because, I mean, I started in 2006 until 2009 I thought we're uh, in the, we live in a global globalized world, so there's no real um, local differences. I get influences from wherever I find them on the internet, and that's international. So I thought my background is not so Swiss, even my education is not so Swiss. But looking back now and comparing my work internationally. It is absolutely Swiss. <laughs> so the influences are there, although you don't see them directly yourself. Only later in retrospective you can see them. I'm not looking for a certain style. I'm trying to do my best to, to uh, uh, fulfill, uh, fulfill the needs of my clients. And that's not a style. That's uh, more like a question of concept. But obviously, I have my... Uh, procedures of developing uh, design and that always goes somehow in the same direction. It's a weird question because normally normally people who are interested in my graphic design are not so interested in, in my uh, uh, music and the other way around. I'm interested in, in, uh, in um, everything from blues through country but also more contemporary music, rock and roll obviously. Um, I don't see that much influence from my music into my work, but I see influence from my interest of music in my work. That's what I want to say. So uh, it's not because I'm a musician, it's more like because I can relate to the musicians that make the music and I make the poster for them. Also if you think of the question, where do you, do you get your inspiration? And inspiration can be found anywhere. I can walk to the bus stop and find something that is inspiring. I can see a poster that I don't even like but get inspiration from it. I can, in graphic design, stealing is it's very like something that you don't want to do but obviously you steal all day long. You see things that you like but applied in a different way. So, so one thing is I, I need a little time pressure. So it doesn't work if you uh, sit there and think, oh, maybe in three or four weeks I need to have a layout ready for that client. Then that's not enough pressure for me. So I need a little time pressure. Uh, but if, if you're locked, I mean, sometimes people ask me, how do you make sure you don't run out of ideas? But that's something you learn when you study design. 
this is the main thing. There's nothing like a creative who is like just uh, has a head full of nice ideas. That's not true. Creativity is an active process. You need to create these ideas. And this is a process not of sitting there and waiting until they, they fall in your head. It's something that you need to do actively. And that's something you learn in your um, practice, but obviously you've learned that before in your studies. So, um, especially in the field of analog typography and letterpress printing, I don't see a reason why any young student would need to buy equipment right away. Because it's not about owning a press, it's not about uh, collecting a ton of type and cleaning it and make it nice. It's about doing something with it. And there's, in, especially in Switzerland, there's tons of museums who are happy if you come over and use their equipment. The first time, you probably have to do a course with them. The second time, you have to pay them a little fee to use their studio. And after the third time, they give you the key and say, we're happy that we have a young person who's interested in that. Because the whole industry is too old. Everybody's too, every uh, association of typographers is too old in the analog technique. So they're happy to let you use the equipment. So I say, first get into the mode of production, and then get into the mode of collecting. Okay.